Like I said, when I was studying for it, I got nervous as hell. I basically would look at a question that would ask me what type of leukemia I was dealing with and would feel like this crying baby here. But the goal of this video is to ease your fears and teach you a really simple, high yield method of getting through this. So what I want to do is get started with the difference between a myeloid leukemia and a lymphoid leukemia. Now it may sound obvious, but let's just touch all our bases here and make sure that we're good. This is a very simple flow chart showing the, the differentiation of a hematopoietic stem cell. If it is the myeloid stem cell, it can turn into a number of cells, but if it's a lymphoid stem cell, it just turns into a lymphocyte, that is to say a B cell or a T cell, and occasionally an NK cell. So myeloid stem cell versus lymphoid stem cell, what should you look for on your USMLE or COMLEX? Well, if it is a myeloid leukemia, you're gonna see a predominance of neutrophils. If it's a lymphoid, leukemia, you're going to see a predominance of lymphocytes. Lymphoid, lymphocytes, myeloid, neutrophils. Now, because the myeloid leukemias, myeloid stem cells can become red blood cells and platelets, so you might see overgrowth of platelets and overgrowth of red blood cells if they show you uh, someone's CBC. So just keep that in mind. But what, when you're presented a patient on your USMLE, the first thing you want to do is look at the labs that they give you. If there are a ton of lymphocytes, it's a lymphoid leukemia. If there are a ton of neutrophils, it's a myeloid leukemia. So I think that the best way to approach this is to break this down into a spectrum so that we can see one leukemia advancing to the next and we'll break this down in a very logical way. So if you have paid attention in anatomy, you should know that the ends would be lateral. So the lateral will put in our lymphoid, the L's match up. So all the way on the left, we have acute lymphoid leukemia and all the way on the right, we have chronic lymphoid leukemia. Again, if you were half paying attention in anatomy, you know that the middle portions are called medial. So we will put the ones with the M's for medial in there. So here is our spectrum so far. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the very basic information that we can already discern from, about these leukemias just based on their name. If it's acute, it means that it's immature. There are blast cells or immature cells. These are the cells that are produced by the bone marrow at the very early stages of cell differentiation. Contrast that to a chronic leukemia. A chronic leukemia is one where the cells are mature. They are not blast cells, but they are mature. They have grown throughout their cell cycle and they are no longer immature, but rather they are mature. As I told you earlier, if it's lymphocytic, it's lymphocytes, or lymphoid for lymphocytes. And if it's myeloid, it's neutrophils. So this is very basic here. These are our four different types on our spectrum. Let's fill in some very defining characteristics of each that you should be familiar with for step one. In the green, these are the defining cell characteristics. In ALL, they're gonna stain positive for TDT. In CML, you're gonna have the Philadelphia chromosome. That is a really fancy way of saying that there's a translocation between chromosome nine and 22. This is really, really high yield. They love dropping Philadelphia chromosome or a translocation of 922 on USMLE or COMLEX. So just put, commit that to memory. AML is gonna be myeloperoxidase positive and have our rods. And then CLL, there is really no defining characteristic other than the fact that you just have a shit ton of lymphocytes. In red, we have the treatment for each of these leukemias. ALL, you give cytarabine, also known as ARAC. For CML, you give imatinib. Imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor because, again, the problem in a chronic myeloid leukemia is that you have a tyrosine kinase that's overexpressed. It causes a translocation of 922, and it expresses cancer. So the goal is to turn that tyrosine kinase off. When you the translocation turns that tyrosine kinase on indefinitely, and we want to block it. So what is a drug that blocks tyrosine kinase? Well, that's imatinib. So you could get a question on your USMLE or COMLEX that says, which of the following drugs is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor? It won't be that straightforward, but that's the gist of what it'll be asking you. And you'll know that it's imatinib because imatinib treats chronic myeloid leukemia. And the reason that it's successful in treating chronic myeloid leukemia is because it turns off the tyrosine kinase that is overexpressed when the Philadelphia chromosome translocation takes place. Whew, that was a mouthful. Let's keep going. AML, we treat with all trans retinoic acid, also known as ATRA. Now, that is vitamin A. You only use this treatment if it's the M3 variant of AML. So AML has a bunch of different subtypes. You don't need to know any of them except for one. There is one that's known as the M3 variant. And all that means is that you treat it with vitamin A. If it's the M3 variant, it's going to stain positive for myeloperoxidase and you're gonna see our rods on a smear. I'm gonna show you a picture of what that looks like because it's so high yield. 
For chronic lymphoid leukemia, you do nothing. These are going to be old patients who just have a shit ton of lymphocytes in their blood. They're going to be asymptomatic. You're going to do nothing. The only time you treat CLL is if the patient is symptomatic, but usually these patients present asymptomatic and they're going to die with CLL, so you don't put them through harsh chemotherapy. The other thing that I want to point out, and the whole basis for this spectrum, is the age that people usually get these diseases. If you can remember this spectrum, it will go a long way for you, because starting at the left and working your way to the right, the patients increase in age. So ALL typically affects children around the age of 10. CML, usually, you know, young adults around the age of 40. AML, older adults between the ages of 50 and 70. And then CLL, are really, really old people who usually are around the age of 80 and hence they die with it so you don't treat them. If you can remember this, if you get caught up on a question on your USMLE or your Comlex and you have no fucking idea what the answer is, you can just make a guess totally based on their age. And more often than not, that's good enough if you really have to just take a guess. So I would also memorize these ages and try to get this spectrum down. The last thing that I want to show you is the hour rods for AML. This is such a high yield picture. You need to understand this. If you see some a patient who's presenting to you with symptoms of leukemia, and then they show you this smear, and they show you this picture, see those things that the arrows are pointing to? Those are hour rods. They're kind of like flat little crystals in the cytoplasm of these cells. All you need to think about when you see this is AML. It's an hour rod, it's AML, it'll stain positive for myeloperoxidase, treat it with vitamin A or all transretinoic acid. They're going to ask you some variation of what I just said. Maybe they show you this picture and say, which of the following will be effective in treating this patient? And they'll give you like five different vitamins. Or maybe they'll show you this picture and say, what else do you expect to find in this smear? And it's going to be uh, the presence of myeloperoxidase. You need to know that this is an hour rod and this is high yield. This is the highest yield piece of information that I'm giving you in this entire lecture today. Again, Know the spectrum, know these characteristics, and know the age ranges. If nothing else, this is good enough to answer 90% of the questions that you'll be asked. The last thing that we need to touch, touch on is there's a chance that CML can progress to AML. So CML will always come first because it's chronic, meaning that there are mature cells. But people can go into what's called a blast crisis. A blast crisis is when there are greater than 20% blasts in the smear. So if you are producing all these immature cells and they're kind of growing out of control, you go into a blast crisis. But the technical definition of a blast crisis is greater than 20% blasts in the smear. So again, if you're getting a question and they tell you that there's 33% blasts, you automatically know that we're talking about at least AML. It can't be CML because you're in a blast crisis. So the reason that I point this out is that because patients who have CML can progress to AML. So you need to keep that straight. It's very important and it's very high yield. All right, guys, this is the summary slide. This is all I have for you. It is high yield. If you know nothing else, know the ages. I promise you the ages will help you guess if you need help. But know the green and the red here. Know the treatments and know the defining characteristics of each. Good luck.